And it's just uh, humbling to say the least. <laughs> this might be a stupid decision. I think it was kind of like my absolute limit. I feel so stupid. Why didn't we baby moon in Hawaii? <laughs> Good morning from Flagstaff. Sorry about the itchy throat. I feel like I kind of struggle sometimes with these like dry climates. We've been in a lot of really dry climates recently and so my voice is a little bit huskier than normal. <laughs> Made our way north from Phoenix yesterday after going to my best friend's wedding. It was a really nice weekend, really, really busy, but also so much fun. So yesterday we made the two hour drive up north from Phoenix. And if you have never done the drive from Phoenix to Flagstaff, probably done it about four or five times, but it is still so interesting because you start in Phoenix and it's like the real desert of what you imagine. You've got the saguaro cacti everywhere. And then the landscape changes so quickly. You can see like probably three, maybe even four different ecosystems or landscapes just from a two hour drive between Phoenix and Flagstaff. Highly suggest that drive if you wanna see some really cool rock formations, different ecosystems, landscapes, highly recommend it. This morning we are headed to Arches National Park. We're also gonna stop in Monument Valley on the way. I've never actually seen it before, so this will be something new for me. And I've got a few more national parks that we're gonna be going to. If you've seen my previous video or the one before, you may have seen that I'm pregnant. So this is our baby moon. It's definitely not your typical baby moon. I know that. I feel like most people, when they do a baby moon, they go to like Hawaii or Mexico and just like go and sit on the beach and relax. Although that is really nice, we kind of did a little bit of that in Costa Rica. My idea of an amazing trip is going out, seeing some awesome nature and scenery and doing some hiking. I know that the level of hiking that I'm gonna be doing on this trip is not going to be the same because I am six months pregnant, but still looking forward to seeing some new national park and have a nice memory of uh, one of our last trips as just the two of us. <laughs> So some of the trails that we're going to, I'm not 100% sure of the weather. This is insane. Which is why we're not camping, because every place that I looked at, it's going to be hovering around freezing, below freezing in some places, and so that's why we're not camping. I just didn't think I'd be comfortable being this pregnant and having to deal with also being cold, dealing with snow on the tent. Just decided to give up on the idea of camping and we're just staying in hotels. So we won't be using the roof nest on this trip, unfortunately. I'm thinking that I want to get spikes. I, I just really want to minimize the risk of falling. So I think on the way out of town, we're going to stop at REI, get some spikes and go ahead and start our trip to up to Arches today. Anyway, gonna go ahead and get checked out and get started on the road trip. So we have made it to Monument Valley and I'm talking to you from the car because A, it is raining outside, B, it is really windy, and see, we didn't really book a tour. It's actually not the time of year anyway that we can book a tour. And so we're just kind of driving through. We're gonna stop at some viewpoints along the way. Although Monument Valley is a very famous area, there's not really a lot to do because you are on Navajo land. So you're very limited to kind of what you can do in the area. But I'm really glad we've done this because we've been talking about coming to Monument Valley basically since we moved to California three years ago. to Arches National Park. And as you can see, already got an arch in. <laughs> We're at Navajo Arch right now. The last time I was here, I was here with my parents and it was August. So it's really, really interesting to be here at a completely different time of year. It's been really cold. It's actually it was snowing a little bit on the trail earlier and it's been raining. And as you can see, I've got all my layers on. <laughs> so it's just been really interesting to see the contrast between winter and summer and the mountains in the background as well. I think they're called the LaSalle Mountains. Absolutely covered in snow and it's so beautiful. Time to go before the sun sets so we can see a few more arches. 
If you watched my Colorado video, you might know what this is, but I always like to say the little to the little baby trees, good luck as I go by them on the trail. <laughs> gotta say good luck to all the little babies. They got a long way to go. And especially the ones that are right next to the trail. They probably have some of the hardest job growing into big tall trees. Also on the way to the next arch right now, there was this group of guys that was in front of us. They look like the kind of people that I would not enjoy hiking with. And um, I think they're up on an arch right now, which is an absolute no-no for arches. It has signs everywhere saying, do not go on any of the arches because obviously that's going to put strain on it and break them. So don't do that. You cannot hike onto the arches. Partition arch, landscape arch, Navajo arch, north window arch, that south window arch. And last one for the night, turret arch. So before I lose all the light, I will go ahead and say goodnight here. And tomorrow I will see you in Canyonlands. Good morning from a new national park to me. Canyonlands National Park. Don't really know what to expect from this park. It is absolutely massive and it seems like there's only like a few areas where we can kind of go into without doing a lot of driving. So we're just visiting the area that most people visit, which is called Islands in the Sky, which to me sounds like a Zelda level or something. So I really like the name of it, but we're just enjoying um, a hike to Murphy's Point and then we'll go have some lunch and then visit some other arches and different rock formations later. So I wanted to take this opportunity to thank Luma for sending me my first product on the channel. Luma sent me this water bottle just wanting me to give a completely honest review and honestly I absolutely love it. So what they have sent me is a smart water bottle. As you know I do a lot of hiking stuff, camping, outdoors, traveling, but the reason why I was really interested in this product is because this is actually something that I've been looking into buying for a long time. There are two ways that you can do filtration when we're hiking on really long trails and we fill up from rivers or different water sources we use something which filters out things like sediment sand rocks you know different kinds of yicky stuff in the rivers but this is something that you can use when you're traveling one of the things that I hate the most when I'm traveling I hate going to new countries where I'm not 100% sure about the water quality and I have to go out and buy loads of plastic water bottles for my entire trip I just feel like that's so wasteful and it does get expensive after a while. So this completely eliminates that. I can fill it up from any tap or faucet and it takes about 60 seconds to sanitize the water completely to make it safe for drinking. And Luma actually says that when you sanitize your water, it's like boiling it for 20 minutes. So I know that I'm definitely going to feel safe when I'm drinking it. And since I've been traveling around, going to all different places on our baby moon, I know that I can fill this up from anywhere and feel completely safe to drink it. So how it works is you charge up the bottle. It's got a USB-C port in the back and the bottle will stay charged for about a month. I've used this for about a week and I have used this exclusively every single time that I've been drinking water and I've probably filled this up about five or six times a day. Battery is still going fine. So you just unscrew the top, fill up your water from any tap or faucet, screw the top back on, and you're just going to hold the button on the bottom for about a second and then down here it will light up and then when the light turns off your water is fully sanitized in about 60 seconds. So if you're interested in owning your own Luma water bottle, I do have a link down below so that you can go and purchase one for yourself. Anything purchased through the link is going to support my channel and thank you to Luma for sending me this product to review. It is definitely something that is going to be a staple in my travel bag. So I guess I will address the fact why I decided to do a baby moon to national parks because in national parks, at least what we do is we do a lot of hiking. <laughs> to be honest, I did think that obviously I was gonna be doing less than what I normally do and I have, but yesterday the hike that we did, I think was kind of like my absolute limit. It was about like four miles and it was elevation gain of about 500 feet. And I think that that was definitely kind of my limit because after then I was really, really sore. So that's kind of the difference that I'm noticing from being 
pregnant versus not being pregnant and hiking. Yeah, so if this was like a normal national park that we would go to, we'd probably plan for like all day hike, something like 10 miles, 2000 feet of elevation gain, something like that. And it's just uh, humbling to say the least <laughs> to realize now that I have limits and I can't push myself too far because obviously that's dangerous for both myself and the baby. I definitely don't regret going to national parks for our baby moon because I get to go to some new national parks, which is something that I love to do. And it still is good to get out and get exercise, obviously. It's just different exercise than what I'm used to doing. Yeah, I guess all this just to say that sometimes you just need to respect your limits, know your limits, and this has been a good lesson for me in patience, which is, I'm sure, something that I'm going to need being a parent pretty soon. <laughs> so you think that I'd be all arched out after going to arches yesterday, but I think that Mesa Arch is maybe my favorite one we've seen. You look through and you look down and it's literally just, I mean, just a massive, massive drop down. I wasn't allowed to look on the edge because Dominic doesn't like it when I look over the edge, but damn, that is so impressive. I understand why that is one of the most popular spots to stop at here. So back at the hotel and just kind of wanted to do a brief overview of kind of half a day in Arches and a full day in Canyonlands National Parks. Obviously it's March. Um, it is kind of spring break season though, so there definitely were some families around, but it was not anywhere near as busy as when I went in the summer vacation time. And Canyonlands, not a surprise, is filled with canyons, but it was just, I don't know what I was expecting. Maybe I was just expecting one gigantic canyon or something, but it was, I guess because Canyon Lanes is kind of split up by these different rivers that merge together, there's several canyons throughout the park. And also the park is absolutely massive. If you want to see all the park in one day, it's impossible. It's just not going to happen. It's way too big. And you also have to kind of go all the way around to different areas because of the rivers. They don't have bridges linking all the different canyons. They're just huge. They're way too big. So I have been to about half of the national parks in the US and I am gonna be doing a video soon ranking all of them from my least favorite to my most favorite. And I would say Canyonlands and Arches are kind of somewhere in the middle, although the landscapes are absolutely stunning. Like if you love Southwestern mesas and arches and hoodoos, and that is definitely the place to see some beautiful landscapes. Although I completely and fully appreciate them, it's not my favorite style of national parks. I really love places where I can see lots of wildlife. I love woodlands. I love mountains. Although you can definitely see some amazing vistas here of the LaSalle Mountains all snow-capped in the winter. That was stunning. But I would rank Arches and Canyonlands kind of similar in my overall ranking video. Both very similar in kind of southwestern vistas and the geological structures of the rocks. We're staying in Moab again tonight. Um, we're probably going to go out for like a very casual dinner. We are leaving very early tomorrow morning to try and make the most of getting to our next national park and last national park on this baby moon, which is Bryce Canyon. And to be honest, Bryce Canyon is the one that I've been looking forward to the most. So I wanted to reserve as much time as I possibly can for tomorrow. So I wanted to get back, get everything packed so that tomorrow morning we can just head off and enjoy our last national park of Bryce Canyon. this morning. We tried to get some spikes in Flagstaff and they were really really expensive at REI, not a surprise. But then I went to another outdoor store and they were the same price but um, I'm just looking for like some really cheap like micro spikes and they just apparently are not selling them so I guess I will just go without spikes today. Even though if you can tell we are in a winter storm. <laughs> Never really know what you're gonna get I guess when you're traveling around national parks in the winter. So we usually take my car on these road trips. It's a Subaru Forester all-wheel drive, have snow chains in the back, ready for such occasions as what we're here in. Before we left, I went to go get the oil changed because we were driving a lot and they checked the brakes and there was an issue with the brakes, so we weren't able to take my car. So we're taking Dominic's car, which is a muscle car. It's a Dodge Challenger and not exactly equipped for winter 
road driving. So I actually really don't know if we're gonna make it to Bryce Canyon. Some grit has been put on the road so we can still see part of it and there's still traction, but it's really not the most ideal car to be driving in this situation, but that's okay. We'll just see how far we can get safely. Okay, update, we are alive. The road has gotten a lot better now. It was a little sketchy, not gonna lie, going up to the top. We didn't realize that we were gonna hit a summit. Can't really tell from like the maps because we have no signal, but we were climbing and climbing and we were losing the road more and more. And then at one point it was just completely covered in snow. So we were just taking it really, really slowly and trying to like kind of drive in the middle of the road when there wasn't a car coming, which there hasn't been that many cars on this road. So that wasn't a problem. So yeah, by the time we got up to the summit, it was about like 9,000 feet elevation. And thankfully, we weren't up there for very long and then started to go down, so I feel a lot better now. We have a lot better chances, hopefully, of getting to Bryce Canyon today. Just hope that the roads continue to be okay. And yes, you may notice that I'm wearing the same clothes as yesterday because for some reason I didn't bring loads of cold weather clothes. I don't know. It was such a disaster the day that we left because I told you we were. I was having issues with the brakes. I was trying to see if I could get them done before we left. I was also packing. We left really, really late. I just didn't bring enough cold weather gear for this trip. I think also because we're not camping, I just wasn't thinking like in that outdoor like camping mindset like we normally do. So this is my cold weather outfit that I'm wearing again on day two. <laughs> We have made it to Bryce Canyon. I feel like just barely. And this is one of those times where I think, why didn't we baby moon in Hawaii? <laughs> this is insane. <laughs> I wanted to come to Bryce Canyon. This is the one national park that I was really, really looking forward to coming to because I really wanted to see the hoodoos and all the pictures of them. It looks absolutely amazing and so interesting and unique. And this is what our view is of the hoodoos. That's it. <laughs> One of the big viewpoints when you get into the park is called sunrise and sunset view. And so I'll put that picture here to show you what it's supposed to look like and what it looks like for us today. I'm really, really regretting not having my warm hat. I've just got my hood of my puffy jacket, so at least there's that. Such a relaxing baby moon. Good morning and apologies for this really weird angle. This is honestly the best light that I can get in this hotel room. So yesterday in Bryce Canyon, we really didn't get to do as much as I wanted to. We were really worried about the roads because when we were coming in, they had not been plowed. It was snowing hard and it was about 28 degrees Fahrenheit in some places. So it was just getting colder and colder. And yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I did not love that. I would have felt so much more comfortable in my car. I have snow chains with my car as well. So I feel like if something happened, we could have easily got out. But yeah, in Dominic's Challenger, I felt way less adventurous than I normally would in that occasion. Driving in and around Bryce Canyon, I didn't feel super confident, and he didn't either, to be honest, because sometimes when we were pulling into parking lots, when we had to stop, it was hard to get going again because his car is obviously not meant to be driving on snow. So we didn't really get to see that much of Bryce Canyon. We just went to the sunrise and sunset points, and we walked in between them, and we didn't go down at all because, once again, I was just having a hard time finding the spikes that I wanted. So I didn't end up getting any spikes. So going up and down with all that snow, I just didn't feel comfortable. I feel like this whole trip has just been a huge lesson in humility. I definitely can't do the amount of physical activity that I'm used to doing and that's okay. I know that I will get back to that once I get more comfortable and confident with, after having the baby. But for now, it's just 
sitting back a little bit and realizing that I can't do everything. Sometimes things like the weather even get in the way. So we only ended up spending about like two and a half hours in Bryce Canyon, which is definitely not the amount I wanted to. So hopefully we'll get back there one day because that was the park that I was really looking forward to the most and the park that we spent the least amount in, which was really sad. But you know, gotta be safe and gotta think about not getting stranded in a really bad winter storm. <laughs> So we are heading home today. And like I said in my life update video, we've got some family visiting. So we are gonna be going to Joshua Tree and Death Valley National Park. I'm not gonna be filming a specific video about those two parks. I've been to them before. Just wanted to spend some good quality time with my family that's visiting over from England. We are gonna be camping. And whenever I'm traveling, I do post every day on my Instagram stories. And if you want to follow along with where I am or what I'm doing, feel free to follow along on Instagram. As I mentioned before, I am gonna be doing a national park ranking video where I rank all of the national parks that I've been to. I've been to about half of them, so I feel like it's gonna be a good ranking system. Feel free to subscribe if you are interested in seeing more videos like that. Just wanna say thanks Utah. It has been a great baby moon. Definitely not your normal baby moon, I know, and yesterday. I definitely did question why I didn't go somewhere a little bit easier to travel to, but I still wouldn't have changed anything. I wouldn't have had it any other way. It was definitely my style of baby mooning. Just wanna say thank you so much for watching. Remember to leave it better than you found it, and I will see you next time. Window arch, not to the wall. It's snowing. <laughs> you give me my shot. <laughs> Landscape. <laughs> oh my god, I'm crying. This is stupid. <laughs> that was totally me. That was totally me speaking. There's like this fame. Oh gosh. Dude, I can't face this way because I get snow in my face. You gotta say the line. I think I'm tired now. I think I'll go home. <laughs> <laughs> Just about. <laughs> ah, them hoodoos. Talk about them hoodoos, yeah? Those hoodoos are great. I'm sure I can't see that right now. Woo. You have fun watching through this later. Oh, it's going to take me forever. Yeah. <laughs>